Okay, this is the ATI Chapter 4 for Maternal Newborn Prenatal Care. Prenatal care involves nursing assessments and client education for pregnant clients. When providing prenatal care, nurses must take into account cultural considerations. Prenatal education encompasses information provided to a client who is pregnant. Major areas of focus include assisting the client in self-care and the comforts, discomforts of pregnancy, promoting a safe outcome to pregnancy, and fostering positive feelings by the pregnant client and their family regarding the childbearing experience. Prenatal care dramatically reduces infant and maternal morbidity and mortality rates by early detection and treatment of potential problems. A majority of birth defects occur between two and eight weeks of gestation. Nursing assessments. Nurses play an integral role in assessing a client's current knowledge, previous pregnancies, and birthing experiences. Client history. Nursing assessment is pre- in prenatal care includes obtaining information regarding reproductive and obstetrical history, medical history, including physical pre-existing conditions and the client's immune status, nutritional history, a complete dietary assessment can alert the practitioner to deficient practices and food allergies, family history, such as genetic disorders or conditions that could affect the mother or fetus, any recent or current illnesses or infections, current medications, including substance use and alcohol consumption, Psychosocial history, a client's emotional response to pregnancy, adolescent pregnancy, spouse support, etc. Any hazardous environment exposures like current work conditions, current exercise and lifestyle, and abuse history or risk. Assess all clients for all forms, including physical, sexual, or psychological abuse. <clears throat> birth plan, a nurse ascertains what a client's goals are for the birthing process. The nurse should discuss birthing methods such as Lamaze and pain control options, epidural and natural childbirth. Prenatal assessments. Prenatal care begins with an initial assessment within the first 12 weeks and continues throughout pregnancy. In an, eventful, in an uneventful pregnancy, prenatal visits are scheduled monthly for weeks 16 through 28, every two weeks from 29 to 36, and every week from 36 until birth. The initial prenatal visit is to determine the estimated date of birth based on the last menstrual period, obtain medical and nursing history to include social supports and review of systems, perform a physical assessment to include a client's baseline weight, vital signs, and pelvic examination, obtain initial laboratory test including hemoglobin, hematocrit, WBCs, blood type, and RH, rubella titer. Ongoing prenatal visits. Monitor weight, blood pressure, and urine for glucose, protein, and leukocytes. Monitor for the presence of edema. Monitor fetal development. FHR can be detected at early appointments by ultrasound. The heartbeat can be heard by Doppler late in the first trimester. Listen at the midline right above the symphysis pubis by holding the Doppler firmly on the abdomen. Measure fundal height starting in the second trimester from weeks 18 to 30. The fundal height in centimeters is approximately the same as a number of weeks gestation. Fetal health assessment. Begin assessing for fetal movement between 16 and 20 weeks of gestation. Provide education for self-care to include management of common discomforts and concerns of pregnancy. Nursing care. Perform or assist with Leopold maneuvers to palpate presentation and position of the fetus. Assist the provider with the gynecological examination of the client's reproductive organs at birth canal. Pelvic measurements determine whether the pelvis will allow for the passage of the fetus at delivery. The nurse has the client empty their bladder and take deep breaths during the examination to decrease comfort. Administer Rho immune globulin IM around 28 weeks of gestation for clients who are RH negative. Routine lab tests. Blood type, RH factor, and presence of irregular antibodies determine the risk for maternal fetal blood incompatibility. CBC with differential HGB and HCT detects infection and anemia. HGB electrophoresis identifies hemoglobin pathos. Rebellia titer determines immunity to rebellia. Hepatitis B screen identifies carriers hepatitis B. Group B streptococcus, vaginal and rectal cultures are performed at 36 and up to 37 weeks of gestation to assess for GBS infection. Urinalysis with microscopic examination of pH, specific gravity, color, sediment, protein, glucose, albumin, and humic chronic gondotropin 
identifies pregnancy, diabetes mellitus, gestational hypertension, renal disease, and infection. One hour glucose tolerance identifies hyperglycemia done at the initial visit for at-risk clients and at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation. Three hour glucose tolerance used in clients who have elevated one hour glucose tests as a screening tool for diabetes. A diagnostic of gestational diabetes requires two elevated glucose readings. Glycoslided hemoglobin indicates for clients who have diabetes mellitus prior to pregnancy. 6.5 to 8% indicates diabetes. Greater than 8 indicates poor control of diabetes. Papanaclu test, which is a PAP test, used as a screening tool for cervical cancer, herpes simplex type 2, or human papilloma. Vaginal cervical culture detects streptococcus beta hemolytic bacterial vaginosis, or STIs. PPD is tuberculosis screening, chest x-ray after 20 weeks of gestation, identifies exposure to tuberculosis. Venereal disease research laboratory is syphilis screening mandated by law. HIV detects HIV infection. Toxoplasmosis, other infections, rubella screening when indicated. Screening for a group of infections capable of crossing the placenta and adversely affecting the fetal development. Maternal serum alpha fetoprotein, which is a screening occurs between 15 to 22 weeks of gestation, used to rule out Down syndrome and neural tube defects. Client education. Prenatal education includes health promotion, preparation for pregnancy and birth, common discomforts of pregnancy, and warning danger signs to report. Health promotion. Preconception and prenatal education emphasizes healthy behaviors that promote the health of the pregnant client and their fetus. Avoid all over-the-counter medications, supplements, and prescription medications unless the provider who is supervising their care has has knowledge of this practice. Alcohol and tobacco are contraindicated during pregnancy. Substance use of any kind is avoided during pregnancy. Exercise during pregnancy. Avoid the use of hot tubs. Consume at least 8 to 10 glasses of water. The nurse educates the client about the following. Need Need for flu immunization. Tdap vaccine. COVID vaccine, smoking cessation, treatment for current infections, genetic testing and counseling, exposure to hazardous materials. Preparation for pregnancy and birth. Nurses provide anticipatory teaching to the pregnant client and their family about the following. Physical and emotional changes during pregnancy and interventions that can be implemented to provide relief. Maternal adaptation to pregnancy and attainment of the maternal role whereby the idea of pregnancy is accepted and assimilated into the client's way of life, includes hormonal and psychological aspects. The nurse anticipates reviewing prenatal education topics with a client based on their current knowledge and previous pregnancy and birth experiences. The client's readiness to learn is enhanced when the nurse provides teaching during the appropriate trimester based on learning needs. Using a variety of educational methods and having the client verbalize and demonstrate learned topics will ensure that learning has taken place. The first trimester, physical and psychosocial changes, common discomforts of pregnancy and measures to provide relief, lifestyle, exercise, stress, nutrition, sexual health, encourage safe sexual practices, possible complications and indications to retort, report, preterm labor, labor, fetal growth and development, prenatal exercise, expected lab testing. Second trimester, benefits of breastfeeding, common discomforts and relief measures, lifestyle, sex and pregnancy, rest and relaxation, fetal movement, complications, preparations for childbirth, review for birthing methods, development of a birth plan. Third trimester, childbirth preparation, childbirth classes, coping methods, breathing and relaxation techniques, acupressure and acupuncture, music and aromatherapy, labor process, infant care, postpartum care, feeder movement kick counts to a certain fetal well-being. A client should be instructed to count and record fetal movements or kicks daily. There are several different methods to complete kick counts. One method is a client should count fetal activity two or three times a day for two hours after meals or bedtime. Fetal movements of less than three per hour or movements that cease entirely for 12 hours indicate a need for further evaluation. Common discomforts of pregnancy. Nausea and vomiting might occur during the first trimester. The client should eat crackers or dry toast before 
Rising in the morning to relieve discomfort. Instruct the client to avoid having an empty stomach and ingesting spicy, greasy, or gas-forming foods. Breast tenderness might occur during the first trimester. The client should wear a bra that provides adequate support. Urinary frequency might occur during the first and third trimesters. The client should empty the bladder frequently, decrease fluid intake before bedtime, and use perennial pads. The client is taught how to perform Kegel exercises to reduce stress incontinence. UTIs are common during pregnancy because of renal changes and the vaginal flora becoming more alkaline. UTIs risk can be decreased by encouraging the client to wipe the perennial area from the front to back after voiding. The client should urinate before and after intercourse to flush bacteria from the urethra that are present or introduced during intercourse. Advise the client to urinate as soon as the urge occurs because retaining urine provides an environment for bacterial growth. Fatigue might occur during the first and third trimesters. The client is encouraged to engage in frequent rest periods. Heartburn might occur during the second and third trimesters due to the stomach being displaced by the enlarging uterus and slowing of the GI tract motility and digestion brought about by increased progestion levels. The client should eat small, frequent meals and not allow the stomach to get too empty or too full. Constipation might occur during the second and third trimesters. The client is encouraged to drink plenty of fluids, eat a diet high in fiber, and exercise regularly. Hemorrhoids might occur during the second and third trimesters. A warm sits bath, witch hazel pads, and application of topical ointments will help relieve discomfort. Backaches are common during the second and third trimesters. The client is encouraged to exercise regularly, perform pelvic tilt exercises, use proper body mechanics by using legs to lift rather than the back, and use sideline positions. Shortness of breath and dyspnea might occur because of the enlarged uterus, which limits inspiration. The client should maintain good posture, sleep with extra pillows, and contact the provider if manifestations worsen. Leg cramps during the third trimester might occur due to the compression of lower extremity nerves and blood vessels by the enlarging uterus. This can result in poor peripheral circulation as well as an imbalance in the calcium and phosphorus ratio. Application of heat over the affected muscle or foot massage while the leg is extended can help relieve cramping. Varicose veins and lower extremity edema can occur during the second and third trimesters. The client should rest the legs and hips elevated, avoid constricting clothing, wear supportive hose, avoid sitting or standing in one position for extended periods of time, and not sit with the legs crossed or at the knees. Gingivitis, nasal stuffiness, and epitaxis, nosebleed, can occur as a result of elevated estrogen levels causing increased vascularity and proliferation of connective tissue. The client should gently brush their teeth, observe good dental hygiene, use a humidifier, and use normal saline nose drives or spray. Braxton, Braxton Hicks contractions, which occur from the first trimester onward, might increase in intensity and frequency during the third trimester. Inform the client that a change in position and walking around should cause contractions to subside. If contractions increase with intensity and frequency with irregularity, the client should notify the provider. Supine hypotension occurs when a client lies on their back and the weight of the gravitated ureters compresses the vena cava. This reduces blood supply to the fetus. This client might experience feelings of lightheadedness and faintness. Teach the client to lie on the side lying or semi-sitting position. Dangerous signs during pregnancy. The following indicate potentially dangerous situations that should be reported to the provider immediately. First trimester, burning on urination severe vomiting, diarrhea, fever or chills, abdominal cramping, second and third trimester, gush or fluid from the vagina, vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, changes in fetal activity, severe headaches, dysuria, blurred vision, epigastric pain, and concurrent occurrences of clammy pale skin, weakness, tremors, irritability, and lightheadedness.